Hello, hello, my Java enthusiasts. It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java game development tutorial. And today is number three in our Let's Build a Game series. So when we left off, we had everything set up, all the back end stuff. You know, we had our game object, we had our handler, we had objects in the game that we could create, and we also made this uh, test player class, which if you run the game, will just you know put the box in any random direction. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start keyboard input and getting our player settled and starting all of that up, right? So one thing I did off camera was I went ahead and put our handler initialization above our window initialization. And the reason I do this is because you would sometimes get an error. Now, not all the time, but it would be random. And this bug would, you know, it would you get a random crash sometimes. And the reason was you get a null pointer. And the reason was is because when this handler class was initially down here below the window uh, that means the window is being created first and uh, so I don't know if any of you guys got this problem but if you did this is this is why so um, the window class is being created before our handler is being so basically think of initial initializing it as the game now seeing it right the game does not see anything until it's initialized right so you know this random was not actually seen until we put r equals new random so if we put this below the window when it creates the window as far as the game the game is concerned handler does not exist and I mean yeah it gets compiled and all of that but I'm talking in game when it's running so basically what we did is we created a new window and with that it started up our start method which then called our run method which then called our render method, which that render method then called a handler method. So how could we call a handler method if the game doesn't know what handler is, meaning it was below our window because code compiles from top to bottom. So it would display our window first and then it would initialize handler and then our random and then it would create that object, right? So being that if we took this handler Actually, you know what? Let's put it right here. And we put that above actually initializing it. We're going to get an error. And as you can see right there, we get an error. It's a null pointer because we're calling the handler method when the handler doesn't exist as far as the game concern is, is concerned. So always, you know, if you're getting a null pointer, look for, you know, you may be initializing something that's not... I mean, yeah, all the code looks right, but it may sometimes very well just be the order in which you're initializing stuff and calling methods. All right, so that's just a quick side note. Keep track of that, all right? So let's go ahead and begin with the keyboard input. So we went ahead and created a quick player here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, random velocities here. We'll keep the player white. And what I did uh, in the game class is I just went ahead and just spawned the player in the middle of the screen so with divided by 2 minus 32 instead of that random alright so that's gonna be what our player looks like I and mean, you can make them bigger smaller it doesn't really matter same concept goes so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new class and this is going to be our key input class and this right here is going to extend our key adapter all right. Now, with our key adapter, we need to have some methods. Now, these methods are going to be part of key adapter. Sort of like how we made game object. You know, we made this entire thing and then we took player and we extended game object. Well, it had those tick and render method or or it had um these getters and setters, right? That were inside the method or or you know, the game object class. But they weren't required to be inside the player class. It's the same thing with this key input. This key adapter inside it has these public void key press and key released functions. So we can make them right now, public void key press, and it needs to be exactly how I put it. And in the parentheses, you need a key event. So public void key released key event E. Control shift O to import that. Now again, key press, this is with a capital P, this is with a capital R. 
So it's key press and key release. Make sure you spell release wrong. Or, or right, no, don't spell it wrong, spell it right. And, uh, you know, that will obviously take out any errors that you might have, right? So in here, we're going to create an integer e, and this is going to equal e dot get key code. And what that does is basically we're just setting that variable key to a uh, letter binding at which when we press a key on the keyboard, it's going to display the number value corresponding with the letter that you've pressed. Right? So let me just give an example real quick. Let me system.out.println key. And so we're not actually getting key input yet. What we need to do is we need to go into the game class here. We can initialize this before anything. We say we could say this dot add key listener new key input. And that's it. Oh, there we go. So that that just tells the game, hey, we're going to be using keys. So make sure you're quote unquote listening for it. So if we run the game, actually, you know, what, let's go ahead and stop printing out our frames for now. So say for example, I press the Q. In our debug here, we get 81. A, 65, Z, 90. And I can hit a bunch of keys, and now you're getting all these different numerical values, but they all correspond to a different type of uh, key on your keyboard. I believe it is called the ASCII, ASCII keys, you know, however you say that. But that is basically what we're doing. So We've got a key input. That it was that simple. We just create this class and we init, we call for a listen in here and everything's set. Now in our key input, we need to create an instance of our handler class because we're gonna be using that. And in the constructor, handler, handler, and this dot handler equals handler. Now this just basically is saying, okay, whatever we put in the constructor of the handler is going to equal it to this. So in other words, in our game class, in our in our parameters here, we can just put handler. And that should work the same. No errors, anything like that. This goes to show what I was saying in uh, previously in my video is that if we put handler underneath that, we're gonna get an error. Oh, when we hit the key. Oh, actually we're not. Which is interesting although it won't work I know that for certain because basically what we're doing we may not get an error but what we're doing is we are calling handler before it's created which is not good don't do that all right so there we go so all right what I'm gonna do now is basically we have the task of now uh, oh, and key release, you're going to do the same thing. E, e dot get key code. There we go. So now we have the task of this. We say, for example, we, we have, let's, all right, let's do this. Let's create another player class here or player ID. Um, let's go to ID here and we'll name it player two. Just for the sake of this, we're not going to have two players in the game, but just for the sake of the tutorial, let me do go ahead and do this. And you know, we can say here if ID equals ID dot player, we'll set the color to white. And we can say else, I mean, technically you just say else here, but if ID equals player two, we'll set it to red or blue. I said blue. So in our game class here, if we go ahead and create player two, and we'll make him 64 pixels to the right and we ID that as player two instead of player one, we now get a white and blue box on the screen. So th these are now two different players in our game. So let me ask you this, how do we differ differentiate the players in our key input? How do we know if we hit the W key, we only want player one to go up, not player two. And this actually was a challenge for me when I was beginning and I didn't quite understand it. So what we need to do is we just need to loop through all of our objects in our game and say which one has the ID of player. If it has the ID of player, then move the player. So for example, that's why we need the handler in here. So we're going to create a for loop, i equals zero, 
i is less than handler dot object dot size i plus plus oh we need to make that an integer all right so now what we're doing is this for loop will loop through all the objects in the game and now we say we can create a game object here temp object and this can equal handler dot object dot get i so now we can use temporary object as our base so we pretend temp object is every object in our game now we can just use that so we can say if temp object dot id or, or i'm sorry dot get id is equal to id dot player then in here is going to be all the key events for player one and that's it so if we say now let's uh, add keyboard input into it so if and this is how you do it uh, key equals equals key event dot vkw then we can say temp object dot set or no here let's just do this temp object dot set y to temp object dot get y minus one all right so that might be a little bit much to comprehend but let's go ahead and run it and see what happens so here i am if i hit the w key as you can see our player one goes up without our player two and if i release it it stops so we're this code right here we're looping through all the objects okay now we're saying okay since we're going to loop through all the objects we're bound to come across object player one so we're going to say if our object has the idea of player then check if we're hitting w if we're hitting w temp at this point at this stage here pretend temp object is id player because that's what it is so um yeah so temp we're now setting temp object we're setting its y to its current position y subtracting one so we're just you know that's like saying y minus equals one all right so now if we wanted to set the player or player two we'd say if temp object dot get id equals id dot player two now this would be the key events for player two and we can copy and paste this and instead of w we can say up and this right here will do the exact same thing so if i hit w our player one goes up if i hit the up key our player two now goes up and we can hit them both oh we can't hit them both at the same time actually that is multiple threading which we'll get into later so we can both bring them up at the same time now this right here isn't very efficient this you know minus you know setting the y variable because th and that's why we use velocity so i mean um so here you can move it at faster speed if we say minus five but you know it's kind of glitchy like it's not very responsive at first so that's why we use velocity so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say temp object dot set velocity y to negative five i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste it three more times s d a so s is going to be five we're going to set velocity x at this point and d is going to be five all right, and then I can just basically copy this. And I'll copy the entire thing. And put it into our key release. And then let's copy this and put it into our player two. And here it's just gonna be up, down, right, left. And it's the same exact thing. So in our key release, we just want them to stop. So we'll put zero, 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 zero. And that's it. 
So if we go ahead and run the game, as you can see, we have our player. And now we move the keys, and look at that. We now have a very, very cool, very fluent way of moving each player all that we want. Very, very cool. And again, if this is not working for you, make sure in your player you have x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y. The reason this works a lot better than just uh, uh, adding to your x is because we're constantly adding the x from our velocity, constantly. And in our key input, we're only adding to our x when we have the key down. So that's why it works so much more efficiently. All right. So I think that's going to be the end for today. Go ahead and like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 100 likes this time. And tell me what you guys want to see next in the series. We still have a lot of stuff to go through. So I won't be running out of material. Uh, definitely want to get into... Uh, starting with states in the game, maybe a quick menu, or do you guys want me to go more into the gameplay side of it and uh, you know get some basic game going? So health bar, enemies that that bounce off the walls, maybe we get the particle trail effect in there, and all of that fun stuff. So maybe a score system, all that stuff. So leave a like, go and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.